going to going into the ground. So last year in Pennsylvania, something called Act 13 passed. Act 13 set in motion, among other things, of what we call the physician's gag rule. And that means that if you are a physician and you have a patient who comes to you and your patient has been exposed to fracking chemicals, you have to call the company, tell them why you want the information, and then in order to be told how to treat and treat your patient, you need to sign a non-disclosure agreement. There's an actor called Mark Ruffalo who says, he fights this all the time in New York State, he says, if fracking's so safe, why isn't it safe? If these chemicals that they're pumping to the ground are so non-toxic and safe, why are they making such a secret of it? And ultimately, as Pennsylvanians who have to drink water and, and hope to have water for future generations that you need to be worried about, if we don't know what's going to the ground now, how are we regulating it? If anybody tells you it's being done safely, they're lying because they don't know what's going to the ground. It cannot be regulated. We need to take a breath, step back. There's a glut of gas on the market right now. Let, let's take a break. There's a moratorium bill coming up. Senator Jim Crow has introduced it. He's put a time on it. This is just to go in line with his uh, existing bill that's in a co-sponsorship memo form right now. But in his bill, it will say six years. And so we wanted to pull out Sue. I can't speak for Sue, but I think it's a logical thing to be in line with what's already happening in the state legislature. So that's my comment. Thank you very much. For Thank you. I'm from Columbia County. I'm very grateful to be here today as a proxy. I would have also been here today as a representative outside. Um, I work for um, an anti-fracking coalition named Shale Justice. Um, I want only to add today in support, in strong support of this moratorium, that what we live in, what we see, what I experience every day, not just as an activist, but because I live up near Sullivan County, I live in the northern portion of Columbia County. What I see every day are the effects that this industry, which I'm going to call industrialized extraction, has on the people, on the environment, on the water. With respect to questions about um, economy, I was president at the present at the occupation of Riverdale last year at about this time, and I can tell you, with I can tell you from my own experience and from the experience of the people there, this is an industry that cares very little in the long run about the economic benefits to Pennsylvanians. If you want to see what the license plates are on the trucks that this industry brings into the state. Um, I invite you, I recommend you, I'm a photo documentarian for the, for the anti-fracking movement, and I invite you to go to my Flickr page and look at the pictures that I have of the license plates, of the bad wells, of the drilling mud spills, of the contamination of Boyle Sock Creek, of the frack pads, of the flares, of the copious truck traffic outside of elementary schools on Route 118. If you really want to see what a hundred thousand wells could look like, if you want to be able to imagine, send me an email, drive out to Columbia County, I will take you in my car and I will show you what this is doing to us. It could be 200,000 wells by 2016. That's the industry estimate. This gas needs to stay in the ground. Its contribution to climate change is substantial. A moratorium is the least that we can do. Thank you, many person. And I want you all to remember and to know certain things as you prepare to vote for this moratorium. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania declares, and I quote, the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and to the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. As trustees of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all the people. You should, you should also know, last year Nationwide Insurance became the first company to announce that damage resulting from fracking would not be covered under personal or commercial policies. You should know that according to a New York Times investigative piece, the level of radioactivity in the wastewater has sometimes been hundreds or even thousands of times the maximum allowed by federal standards for drinking water. Would you knowingly and willingly drink this water? You should also know that about two-thirds of the Pennsylvania of Pennsylvanians support a fracking moratorium, according to a study by the Political Science Department of Muhlenberg College in conjunction with the University 
of Michigan. And I want to take this and make it po uh, political right now, and that is, as Democrats, and I know I'm getting really tired of seeing my fellow Democrats leaving the party to go to the Green Party because they want a party that cares about the environment. We should be that party. Amen. And as has been mentioned, and I will end with this, as has been mentioned, Senator Jim Furlow, who represents parts of Allegheny, Armstrong, and Westmoreland counties, is the prime sponsor of legislation calling for a six-year moratorium on fracking. He is joined by several other wonderful Democratic state senators. They include Senator Lisa Boscola, who represents parts of Lehigh, Monroe, and Northampton counties. Senator Dalen Leach, who represents part of Delaware and Montgomery counties. Senator Ch Shirley Kitchen, who represents Port of Philadelphia County. Senator Christine M. Tartaglian, who represents part of Philadelphia County. And I'm proud to say, my state senator, Judy Schwein, a very popular Berks County Democrat. I ask you all to please vote in favor of this fracking moratorium resolution.